website address. Huh. Hello, it's me, Paul F. Tompkins, from the introduction a few moments from now. Wondering why I'm standing and working? Well, because it's a healthy thing to do. Science has discovered that sitting is actually terribly bad for you. In fact, physical inactivity is the fourth leading risk factor for death. Of course, most of us would rather sit and die than stand and live forever. But what if there were a third way? Apparently there is, with the invention of the skipping desk. I feel better already. This is No You Shut Up. Speak to a person. Beep boop, beep boop, boop. Hello and welcome to NYSU. I'm Paul F. Tompkins. On this week's program, Patrick Warburton is here to take the SATs. Pretty easy. And later, Matt Walsh will join us to guess the smell. Banana. But first, did you hear the news? News is happening all around us. And if you don't pay attention, it'll fly right past your head and into someone else's. Whomsoever's head it flies into is now smarter than you. Don't be dumb. Pay attention, because it's time for the cram. <laughs> Joining me now to share their expert commentary, Republican Red Crab, revered document, the Constitution, and a big dumb bird. Guys, let's cram. Our first story, Obama issues new rules for fracking. Red Crab, we'll start with you. Keep your government out of my energy policy. Yow, Constitution. What in the frack? Frack me, frack you. Frack attack in the back, mother fracker. Battlestar Galact frack back flashback. A big dumb bird? I married a Ziploc bag. Didn't get the invite. Topic closed. Next up, drought emergency in California. IA. Constitution. Keep calm, don't water your lawn. Rhymes. Red Crab. There's no such thing as climate change. Off topic. Flying Dum Dum. Her name's Andrea and she zips closed. I wish you two the best. Okay, it's time for our video challenge. Watch this clip and respond by tying it to a hot button issue. Hit that clip to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Red Crab. Get a job, you lazy a Taking a shot at the unemployed. Const? Splish splash. Chris Christie is taking a bath. Republican dig and personal jab. BDB, try your best. Some dogs are smaller than others. True and reassuringly off point. Oh, that sound means it's time for a dance off. Wing it, idiot. Show me your stuff. Red Crab, get jiggy with it. Paper boy, back that ass up. Red Crab, your moves lack passion. You're out of there! Screw you! Oh, my recyclable friend, you are flailing and failing. Goodbye! It's the nay, nay I say it's no, no. That means Birdman, or the unexpected virtue of ignorance, is the big winner. The ah. floor is yours to dance us off! Ah. And that's it for the Crab! <laughs> Graphic. How about that Crab? My next guest can be seen on HBO's Veep, or presumably at a shopping mall, stands to reason. He's one of my favorite adult male men, Matt Walsh. Matt! You're on the show Veep, as I said in the introduction, or I alluded to at the very least. Yes. Um, you play a character on that show. Mm hmm The character has a name? Mike Mc... I was gonna... Okay, sorry. I gotta get there on my own, because sorry. it helps me for other interviews. Sure. Thank you, though. You play a character named Mike McClintock, correct? McClintock. And he's the press secretary for the Veep, or vice president, mm -hmm. or VP. Yes. So many people have actually seen my character on the show, and they've told me personally that they uh, we exactly nail what they do for a living. How does that work? How when they when they do this, where is this taking place? How's that happening? I don't know. I'm at an airport and someone says, "Hey, I really like your show." And I'm like, "Oh, thank you so much." And the guys like, "You really nail it." And all the problems you guys make fun of, that's exactly what I I'm do having, for a living. Uh, uh, you're saying that to them? I'm having trouble following who's who in this story. Oh my god. You're a terrible host. Okay. 
You be Matt Walsh at an airport. Look at the board. Oh, I'm a fan. Okay. I'm you. Yeah, you're waiting okay. to get on your plane. Matt uh, Walsh. Uh, what? I'm trying to look at the thing. Okay, Matt Walsh. What? I love your show. And Mike McClintock, I'm a press secretary in real life, and you guys nail it. You're the only one on TV that I relate to. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, very nice to meet you. It's uh, always nice to be a fan. Oh, that's a handshake. Now, Matt, we know that you are very politically minded and opinionated, so we wanted to give you the opportunity to speak your mind in our new segment, The News Wheel. Oh, cool. Like a wheel of news subjects. What, what else would it be? Uh, I don't know. It could be a bunch of journalists and a tire swing. I suppose it could be, but it is not. Okay. Anyway, you'll push this button here to start the wheel, and whatever topic the wheel lands on, you'll have 20 seconds to share your unbridled opinion. Just okay. let it rip. Got it? Great. Sounds great. What are the topics? Well, our research team read the entire internet this morning, so it really could be anything from the Middle East to wage inequality, anything in between there. Great. Let's do it. Okay. Hit that thing. <laughs> Come on, drought. I'd love to talk about the drought. We're in big trouble. Oh. What? Okay, the news wheel has spoken, and the first topic for Matt Walsh is horses. Matt, you have 20 seconds. I don't know why that's a news topic. I don't really have an opinion about horses. They're okay, just, clock is ticking. We've lived with them forever. I mean, that's not a news topic. There's nothing new about horses. You gotta have an opinion. It's not an issue. I'm allergic to horses. This is stupid. A fact, not an opinion. There is no, they, we replaced them with cars. I want to talk about something else going on in the news. And time is up. That was not bad, but not great either. Let's move on to the next topic. Hit the buzzer. Come on, give me a drought. How about a wage inequality? And Come on. Oh my God. In the entire history of this segment, which admittedly is less than a minute, I have never seen this happen. Unfortunately, Matt, the news wheel has spoken. And horses it is once more. Matt Walsh, 20 more seconds on the clock. Horses? I'd like go. to spin again. This is not. Nope. Horses aren't even in cannot. the newspapers, Paul. You cannot spin again. It is not part of the segment. And now you've wasted nearly 10 seconds of good horse convo. It's not a news topic. No, they don't even. CNN never talks about horses. There is plenty to say about these beautiful creatures. How dare you come in here and disrespect the news wheel and horses? Oh, now you're out of time. Why is that a news item? This is stupid. Matt Walsh, I don't like your demeanor. I do like that sweater. Thank you. And I don't like your demeanor. You said that twice. It was for emphasis. Okay. You get one final spin. Make it count. Okay. The odds of it landing on horses three times are very slim. Let's go, Mr. Fancy Sweater. Well, it better not land on horses. What, why are, why are there three things spinning now? What's oh, happening? What's oh, happening, Paul? Oh, 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 wow. Never in the history of this show have I seen this happen. Matt Walsh of HBO's Veep, you have won the news wheel. Congratulations. It's a game show? I feel like we were gonna talk about top, now it's a game show. Hi. Why are you trying to figure this out? You won. It's your prize. Basically a coin flip and I want a, a cheese wheel. A tiny wheel of cheese. cheese. This is the prize? That's your prize, you won news wheel. All right. Congratulations. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks of course to Baby Bell for providing this week's news wheel prize and thanks to Lady Liberty, both the real one and the fake one. Coming up, more with Matt Walsh and we get a visit from Patrick Warburton when No You Shut Up returns. Don't eat the wax part. Why would I eat the wax part? Oh. Well, just take my word for it. Why don't you just call it a game show? It's not a news conversation. Nanny cams were a waste of money. Welcome back. My next guest may both look and sound familiar to you as he voices Joe Swanson on Family Guy and Brock Sampson on The Venture Brothers. He's also the voice of Patrick Warburton. Please say hello to Patrick Warburton. Patrick, <laughs> hi. Paul, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. You're welcome. Well, you're under no obligation. I mean, technically, I'm the host, you're the guest. I should be asking you how you are. I don't think that's right. <laughs> you're a very polite young man. Let me ask you something, Patrick. Yeah. Our producers tell me that in your spare time, you review foods. Is that right? Yes, yes. Food reviews. Yes, it's something I started doing for fun. But uh, now it's been getting really huge, like gigantic and uh, monstrous. Oh, I love synonyms. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Sure. 
Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Patrick W's. Today I am reviewing these little babies here. They're called carrots. Crisp and crunchy, like very much like a carrot. Mmm, like carrot cake, not as sweet. And the more I chew, the more pieces of it appear in my mouth. Mm, mm, mm. I give carrots pretty good. That's my review of carrots. Steer clear of this part. I think it's the butt. <laughs> and it grows. Wow, super informative. You know what your review reminded me of? How great food can be. Totally. Food, it's, food is wonderful. I've always been a foodie mm. myself. Yeah, but are there more? More, please. <laughs> More, please. <laughs> sure. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Big Daddy Patty again. Today, I am reviewing this white stuff right here. I believe it's called salt. We're gonna take a little bit of a taster here. Oh, my. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Your mouth is this explosion of a, a salty taste. It's pretty good. It, it makes you thirsty. Thir thir thirsty. It's quite spectacular. I give it a number three. Great stuff. I can see why these reviews are so viral. You know, Paul, it's gotten to the point where YouTubers are making reaction videos to my reviews, and those two have gone viral. So, check it out. Yo, 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 yo. It's Patty Cincinnati here, and today, I'm about to dive into this puppy right here. These are cookies. It's gonna try. Oh, oh my. What a treat. Wonderful. Hey, 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 it's your boy Hot Dog here. Looks like P Dubs is chowing down on some cookies today. Hashtag num 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 num. Hashtag cookies. Hashtag internet. I love my job. I am sorry. I feel like that kind of thing really marginalizes the important work that you're doing with these reviews. Man, look at I, I wouldn't worry, Paul. You gotta get up pretty early on the internet to sneak a, a YouTube video by the old Warburton Patrol. Check this out. I've Please like, share, subscribe, tweet, this. tumble, oh, and wow. snap it. <laughs> Man, hey. look at him go. That was a little he weirdo right here. I anyway, love what, he's what I was saying about the cookies is that they're pretty sugary. I what it tastes sort of like. like cake, but crunchy. Hashtag what about what a cookie like. cake? Good luck figuring that out. I guess I'll just leave that oh, up wow. to the side. Great That's... posture. Patrick Warburton, thank you for being here and sharing Thanks. with us your insights about food. Hashtag thank you, Paul. Coming up, Matt Walsh joins us to talk about China. Ch Ch China. When No You Shut Up returns. Kids don't live in castles, they're kids. Welcome back. Joining me now, conservative Christian Star Schlesinger, celebrity and activist, his words not mine, George Rooney, edutainer Ned Cooper, the science grouper, and comedian Matt Walsh. Now Matt, in an attempt to connect to a younger audience, you will be playing a game called Panel Tunes. Oh. This is a stack of famous cartoon characters, and you must contribute to the panel discussion by doing an impression of whichever character you choose. However, if I don't like it, you will hear this. So try to be accurate with those impressions. Do you understand? That's very grating. This week's topic, China, China, Fofina, China, the country with all those people. Experts are predicting that China will soon take America's spot as the leading economic superpower. Their growth has been explosive. In 1990, China produced only 3% of global goods and now produced nearly 25%. That's more than three. So panel, should America be concerned that it will inevitably be dethroned? Star, I hesitantly start with you. Paul, if you think China's gonna dethrone America, you're a moron. I mean, China is a country that had gunpowder and only used it for fireworks on the wrong New Year's Eve. Confucius say, go back to building big long walls, China. I think we need to take the Chinese very seriously, Paul, because they will stop at nothing to achieve global domination. And they're a bunch of smarties. I heard even their newborn infants can do advanced trigonometry. You know, Paul, I just got back from a four-month movie shoot in China. Amazing country. The people were welcoming, polite, and hardworking. It's no surprise that they are an economically thriving force. In fact, I was taught a profound Mandarin saying you chant every morning to inspire prosperity. Hey, hey, Paul, repeat after me. Okay. Wo yo yigazao ying jing. Wo yo yigazao jing jing. Ha! <laughs> you just said I have a small pee pee. 
Ah, ah, classic rune. <laughs> George, you got me again. I did. This guy with the mm -hmm. pranks. Hey, 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 we don't make anything in the USA. We only make services and soft goods. Nothing durable leaves this economy. So we have no right to compete. We have to use our intellectual property. That's our number one export in this country. Fat Albert. Oh, well, you shouldn't have told me. Oh! I, I, was, I was sort of thinking it was Fat Albert with the hey, hey, hey. And then it went but into... But then when you started talking about China, I was like, I don't know how much Fat Albert knows about China. He knows. China makes 80% of the world's air conditioners, 70% of its mobile phones, and 60% of its shoes. Is the American economy too reliant on China for the manufacturing of goods. Hey, look, look, there's nothing wrong with taking advantage of a cheap labor force. Hey, I happen to have a candle factory in Burma. Shout out to Ong Sung, my factory foreman. He may have no feet, but he's got a heart full of feet. Killed a wabbit. <clears throat> uh, finding a labor force will inevitably move. It has never stayed in one place, whether it's steel or phones. They will constantly migrate to the lowest labor costs. So I believe many markets will return to America. Elmer Fudd, am I right? Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Wow. I, I was first guess thought it was Bobby Kennedy. Yeah. Then it went into sort of Warner Herzog yes. territory. Yes. And then I finally figured out, oh, he said, kill the wabbit. It I must did be Elmer that just Fudd. for my own sake. You know, Great. I thought well he was done. like an adorable Kissinger. If he said bomb Cambodia in that voice, that's that's what bomb I would have bet Cambodia. on. Bomb Cambodia. Yeah, it is like Kissinger. Is. Unfortunately, staggering economic growth comes at a price. Not only is China the world's biggest emitter of carbon, uh, but a new study found that pollution from China actually crosses the ocean and contaminates the air on the west coast of the United States. Is China's pollution problem something the entire world should be worried about? I mean, we need to invoke the age-old law straight out of Hammurabi's code. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Clean up your own mess, China! I believe we have to deal with it, and I believe that health costs for a population in any nation benefits from managing resources and reducing fossil fuels. Mickey Mouse. Pokemon. Oh. Olive oil. Oh. No. Oh. Roosevelt. No. You don't think it was? That sounded what? very much like Mickey Mouse. Pokemon is a category of thing. It's like Pikachu is a Pokemon. You can't just say, hi, I'm Pokemon. It's Why do you know that? Pokemon is a guy, isn't he? Because I'm a dork. No. No? No. no. As a virgin, I'm do you sorry. know what you're missing, or are you just kind of a fog there? Don't care. I've got a yeah. study that says sex is overrated. Hey, speaking of pollution, Paul, yeah. pollution oh, yeah, sure. in Beijing is so bad. There were weeks when I couldn't even leave my trailer. Some days I could barely breathe. One little tip a local gave me was to chew this special gum that helps break down the carbon emissions. It's pretty refreshing. You know what, I brought you some to try. Just right down there in your little, your little station down oh, there. Oh, sure. You keep your stuff. Should I just take this piece that's sticking out? The Do top? that one. That, yeah. I set okay. that one aside for you. How's that taste? You know what that is? That's panda poo! It's not even gum! Rudy! <laughs> I mean, you eat bear scat. George. Yeah. You got me again. Ah, you love guy. it. I love it. The fish loves it. Everybody loves He's it. So funny. It's not that clever. So funny. Not pranks that are clever. great. You don't think pranks I didn't are think good? I think it was that clever. That was a really? clever prank. I guess packaging poo to look like gum. It really looked like gum. <laughs> China has long been criticized for attempting to control its citizenry through online censorship. In fact, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook are all permanently banned in China. Do you foresee an Arab Spring type situation in China in which a populist uprising leads to increased personal freedoms? Paul, that's the most terrible sentence I've ever heard in my life. Arabs, China, I don't like any of it. You know, Paul, the only way we can really understand what it's like to be a Chinese person is to see the world through their eyes, which is exactly why I brought you back an Oculus Rift. That's right down there. Oh, uh, here there under the gum. I didn't it see it under there. Under the gum, there it is. Put that on and you will see what the world looks like it's a real, As a real Chinese person. Okay. Yeah. Just down. put this Easy. on my that is so head. Awesome. Very uncomfortable. Uh -huh. yeah. The straps go in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Pull it down. Wow, this is this is incredible. I seem to be uh, a Chinese person in China. <laughs> I'm making an iPad. Whoa. This is tremendous. Well, I mean, this is incredible, George. Thank you very much. And I, I feel as if this, I wish I could share this with everyone as part of our discussion because it would certainly help people see and, and I dare say feel differently. I feel very different right now after having had this experience. Uh, that's welcome. it for our panel discussion. We will take a break. Where's my camera? We'll take a break. More when Know You Shut Up 
returns. Have you talked to your mummy lately, Paul? Oh, you got so rudy! <laughs>